Hey y'all, we're at 75% of the tickets sold for the HEB Center, New Year's Eve, Austin, Texas. A lot of shows happening that weekend. Come visit Austin, Texas, the live music capital of the world and the new comedy capital of the world. New Year's Eve, HEB Center, last chance for tickets, Ticketmaster.com. Kill Merch is absolutely killing it. We have new drops coming and everything else is absolutely thriving there. I mean, it's just unbelievable. We've sold out and we are refreshing on everything. The store is an absolute wild success. From stickers to tickers to old American pickers, Lord only knows what you will find at killmerch.com right now. Yes, I got the shit that will break your neck. Ooh, and I got you all in check. And I said, raise your fucking hands and no disrespect. Ooh, and I got you all in check. And yes, I asked, I got the music in the discotheque. Ooh, and I got you all in check. And I said, raise your fucking hands and no disrespect. Ooh, and I got you all in check, 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 check. <laughs> This is Red Band coming to you live from the Comedy Mothership here in Austin, Texas for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hinchcliffe! <laughs> Who's ready to fuck some shit up tonight, huh? Yippee! Make some noise for Red Band, everybody. Hi. This is it. You're at the number one live podcast in the motherfucking world. Brought to you by Gel Blaster, the Red Rose, Yellow Rose, Austin Security Guard Service, Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey, and unbelievable new sponsor, IV Drips. You can go to, if you're coming here to visit, use the promo code KILL10 at the one and only CMHUS.com. Connect Mobile Health, an amazing local company here in Austin, Texas. How about one more time for the Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey Band, everybody? Holy shit! It's the great Michael Gonzalez on the drums. Paul Deemer on the horns. Dave Shear joining us tonight on the electric guitar. And this right here is the great and powerful D Madness, ladies and gentlemen. Live in the flesh here yet again. Lots of good times ahead. Before we start tonight's episode, here's a little bit more from the amazing sponsors that made it all possible for you here right now. Hey, y'all. It's official. It's announced. It's out there. My largest stand-up tour of my entire life. All the biggest theaters in all my favorite cities. Toronto, Canada. Royal Oak, Michigan. San Antonio, Texas. Chicago, Illinois. Charlotte, North Carolina. Atlanta, Georgia. Columbus, Ohio. Kansas City, Missouri. Indianapolis, Indiana. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Tyson's, Virginia. Just outside of D.C. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Minneapolis, Minnesota. E Youngstown, Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio, San Francisco, California, Sacramento, California, San Diego, California, Phoenix, Arizona, New York, New York, Clearwater, Florida, and Jacksonville, Florida. Tickets available at TonyHinchcliffe.com. Come see the crazy Texas fucking stand-up that I've been working on. You're not going to believe it. Let's have some fun. The Sunset Strip Comedy Club, owned by Brian Redvan, is in downtown Austin, Texas. Check out The Secret Show every Thursday. All shows can be found at sunsetstripatx.com. Hey y'all, if you're hiring, you know that it's incredibly hard to attract top talent. And with the current labor market conditions, it's even harder than ever. That's why you want a partner who gets it. ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter knows how tough it is right now, but they've figured out solutions for the problems that you're facing. See for yourself right now. You could try them for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash kill Tony. Red man. ZipRecruiter is ready to tackle your recruiting challenges to reach more of the right people. ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter posts your job to 100 plus job sites. Need to hire ASAP? ZipRecruiter's smart technology finds great matches for your job sooner. Want dibs on talent? ZipRecruiter lets you invite the most qualified people to apply for your job. ZipRecruiter's pricing is straightforward, no surprises or costs. That's right. 
No doubt about it. Team up with a hiring partner who understands what you need. ZipRecruiter. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. So just go to this exclusive web address to try ZipRecruiter for free. ZipRecruiter.com slash Kill Tony. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash K-I-L-L-T-O-N-Y. Because ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Hey everybody, this summer HelloFresh can help you be well and eat well with recipes like delicious balsamic rosemary chicken, Mm. which I recently enjoyed. Get 50% off plus free shipping with code Tony50 at HelloFresh.com slash Tony50. Gentlemen, have you ever wished that you were a little bit taller? Maybe you matched on Tinder, but her profile says must be over six foot. Maybe your date wants to wear high heels, but you can't because that'll make her taller than you. Well, we got the short kings covered with today's sponsor, Konzuri. Konzuri makes shoes that will make you look up to 2.8 inches taller without anyone knowing. Look, girls get heels, makeup, and push-up bras. Why can't men get a boost in confidence too? We're all the same height lying down anyway, if you know what I mean. For a limited time, only our listeners can get an extra 15% off your order with the code KILLTONE at Konzuri.com. The site is already 30% off, and with our code, you can get an extra 15%. That's 45% off your entire order. Support the show and check them out at C-O-N-Z-U-R-I.com and use the code KILLTONY. You know, Tony, one time I went on a date, and I had no idea. Like, I'm 5'8". I'm, 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 I'm pretty average height. I didn't know the girl was 6'5". It was so uncomfortable and embarrassing. Damn. But luckily, it didn't work out. Because that would never have worked out unless I had these shoes. Konzuri.com. Use the code KILLTONY now. Did you know that there is one phase of sleep that almost everyone fails to get enough of? And this one phase of sleep is responsible for most of your body's daily rejuvenation, repair, controlling hunger, weight loss, hormones, boosting energy, and much more. I'm talking about deep sleep. And if you don't get enough, you'll probably always struggle with cravings, slow metabolism, premature aging, or even worse conditions. Why don't most people get enough of this number one most important phase of sleep? A big reason is magnesium deficiency because over 80% of the population is deficient in magnesium. Red Band, you know all about this. Yeah, because magnesium increases GABA, G-A-B-A, which encourages relaxation on a cellular level, which is critical for sleep. Magnesium also plays a key role in regulating your body's stress response system. Those with magnesium deficiencies usually have higher anxiety and stress levels, which negatively impacts sleep as well. Now, before you go out and buy magnesium supplements, it's important to understand that most products out there only have one to two forms of magnesium, and the reality is your body Body needs all seven forms of the essential sleep mineral. That's why we recommend Magnesium Breakthrough. Magnesium Breakthrough contains all seven of those magnesiums designed to help calm your mind and body and help you fall asleep, stay asleep, and wake up refresh. The deep sleep benefits are really noticeable. Visit magbreakthrough.com slash kill Tony in order now. Use the promo code Tony because there's always amazing gifts with purchase. That's why I always love shopping at Bio Optimizers. Now go to magbreakthrough.com slash kill Tony to get your Magnesium Breakthrough in to find out this month's gift with purchase. Thank you. You guys ready to start tonight's episode? You guys can do fucking better than that. You guys ready to start the show? Tonight's guest is most likely your favorite comedian's favorite fucking comedian. Uh, 16 years ago when I started at the store, I hung out late night, the very first night I was ever there, and watched this man perform for an hour and a half, two hours, three hours, and then I did the same thing the next night, 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 for a decade and a fucking half, basically. This is the guy that actually closes every real show at the comedy store. All the other kings of late night, they, those are interim champions. This is the actual guy who closed every show in the original room. He's the creator of the funniest movie of all time. I double dog dare you to watch it or watch it again. Windy City Heat. He's the host of the Big Three podcast. Make some noise for Comedy Store legend and one of our favorite guests and favorite friends of the show. Give him a big Austin, Texas welcome. His first time here in the fat man of the mothership. The great and powerful Don Barris, everybody. Let's go. Come on, you guys can do better than that. Yeah. Oh, hell yes. 
thank you. One of my buddy old pals, one of my fucking great mentors, fucking legend of the store. You, Can I ask a question to this audience? Because when you were talking backstage, I heard you talking about how stupid this audience is, and I think you're right. Who here likes to fuck? Yeah, yeah thank goodness for that. <laughs> They do. They do like to fuck here. Don, you've been a guest multiple times. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight. We're going to watch comedians together. Oh, D Madness on a 25-second delay there. Holy shit. All right. You can't... Okay, thank you. All right. So over 200 people signed up for tonight's show. I pull a name out of... Here, hand me that. That's not fair. If I pull their name out of the bucket, that means they get 60 seconds uh, of... uh, uninterrupted stage time. You know their time is up when you hear the sound of a kitten. That means they have to wrap it up then or else they bring out the Angry West Hollywood Bear, which is just loud and aggressive. The, the kitty should be louder, but, you know, we use a lever here that changes all the time instead of anything of any consistent stability whatsoever after 10 years and a month. So it's perfect. Oh, yes, the louder, different cat sound that isn't the actual cat sound always gets that much of a laugh when he does it. There you go, but there, that's as loud as it gets? Yes. That's as loud as that wow. small-ass kitten gets. Maybe we can make some adjustments for next week. <laughs> nope, that's a different cat, Red Band. That's a different cat. Okay, I guess we'll just keep everything mediocre as possible. I love it. Great stuff. This is my business partner for over 10 years, everyone. Ha <laughs> ha Yippee! All right, now we could start the show with one of these bucket pools, but instead um, we have a regular on this show named Hans Kim, but in an unbelievable turn of events, Hans Kim texted me yesterday, yesterday, saying, Tony, I'm not going to be able to make it tomorrow. One day before the show? Yes. The airlines are shut down. I'm stuck in New Jersey. I can't make it to the show. I'm like, Where, what What airport? Newark Airport? He's like, yes. He's like, all flights are canceled because of weather. I go to, I Google flights out of Newark and click news on Google. There's no news. So then I look up flights Newark to Austin for that day. Everything's on time. Everything's running fine. So I take a screen grab of that. I send it to him. He's like, no, that's not actually how it is because he's that crazy or hopped up on drugs that he literally thinks that I don't know how flights work. (laughs) Because he's been flying for a year or two. He must be the master of how flying works. That perhaps the internet has not caught up yet to what's going on in Newark. Um, So I argued with him back and forth saying, you know, if you don't make it, you're going to get challenged next week again because I stopped having him challenged for his regular ship position. I don't know how many of you are caught up on the storyline here, but there's a lot of shit going on. To push Hans to the absolute limit, we've been having him fight for his life and have to have a better minute than somebody else or the other person becomes the new regular on the show, which means they get to do a new minute every week which means they create their own fan base. They sell out tickets on the road, but Hans has been defending his throne. But it turns out he indeed did not make it here tonight. So next week he will be challenging for his regular ship. And in his place, ladies and gentlemen, golden ticket winner, Young Buck from Houston, Texas. Make some noise. This is a brand new minute from Enrique Chacon. Yo, 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 what's up, motherfuckers? Hell yeah, man, I like partying with white dudes, man. They're always down to get fucked up, you know what I mean? Especially the ones with green hair. You know they got good weed, bro. So we were hanging out with some white dudes before a party, and for fun, they decided to go feed vegan tacos to the homeless people downtown. And in my head, I'm like, yo, they're homeless, y'all. They smoke crack, dude. They don't give a fuck about being vegan. They just want to know who wants their dick sucked for $20, which I do. I think that's a really good deal. So we were downtown feeding these homeless people these diarrhea tacos, right? And it turns out that shit is illegal, y'all. The police rolled up, and man, dude, I knew I was going to get fucked up because he took off his body camera. 
Connor was getting rear neck to choke, you know, knee on his fucking neck, bro. I'm backing away. The officer's approaching me, y'all. I'm getting scared. And he just goes, hey, Enrique, uh, are you with them? Are you with them? And I was like, oh, uh, uh, no, officer, I'm homeless. I just want to know who wants your dick suck for $20. So they arrested me for prostitution. All right, there you go. A minute, 15 seconds from Enrique Chacon. We let you go there. Respect for the reigning, defending, golden ticket winner of Kill Tony. How you feel, Enrique? I feel fucking great, y'all. Dude, they just gave me another fucking promotion at Bucky's, son. That's true. He does work at Bucky's. That's the world's <laughs> greatest gas station. Don, is. you ever been to a Bucky's? I've never been to a Duckies. I just remember. <laughs> <laughs> but before the show, we're up there, and you're throwing shit around like crazy, making noise. Yeah, he oh, was causing a little bit of a stir up in the green room. Um, that is true, Enrique. Tell the people what you did. I was looking at some alien shit, bro, because it looks so fucking dope, dude. Like I said, I used to be an art teacher, bro, so I'm looking at this shit like, damn, bro, this is way better than all those fucking children pieces, dude. And then I knocked that shit over, dog. Fuck it, dude. Did he just squeeze in a bit there uh, after his time was over? <laughs> That's why I was interested, you know, because it's an art figure. I used to be an artist before comedy, you know? Fuck yeah. So, Enrique, <laughs> what's been going on since the last time you were on this show? Fuck, man, my chihuahua got bit by a fucking rattlesnake, y'all. <laughs> and we paid for that bitch, bro. We paid her to, to stay alive, right? But then my pit bull got bit by a rattlesnake yesterday, man. And I'm not going to lie. I was like, man, fuck this motherfucker, dog. <laughs> He's people aggressive. I can take him on vacation, you know what I mean? How much did you have to pay to keep the dog alive? <sighs> man, me and my girl had to pay like $1,800, $1,800? For, for some fucking anti-venom, dude. You know how many homeless blowjobs you could get for $1,800? <laughs> you could get your chihuahua bit by a real rattlesnake, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 90. God damn! 3600 3600 No, it's 90 <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck, dog. I think you multiplied instead of divided, Don. <laughs> yeah, I'll fight anybody in here. <laughs> fuck you. Uh, I'll meet you in the back. If you're bigger than me, I'll bash a brick on your fucking head. <laughs> I love it. Enrique, what else is going on? Your love life's good? I met love your lovely lady good, yeah. after the 10-year anniversary episode. Yeah, man, we just walked out looking like a lesbian couple together. Bro. It is true. She She's six foot two, like I said. Like, I'm not lying, dude. I'm into that yeah. shit. Yeah, you guys look like the number 10 when you're with each other. It's incredible. <laughs> Cheesy, but really true. She is a line, and you are a ball. Just a round son of a you bitch. You don't got to be in shape to fuck, Tony. You look like one of those uh, street soccer balls that poor Mexican kids make <laughs> out of, like, tinfoil and paper. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> you have to throw me under the bus like that. Bitch, I'd be in the rerun. Then fuck me. No, just <laughs> My fucking chihuahua got me by a fucking rattlesnake. <laughs> Like Chupacabra Goldthwait <laughs> over here. That's fucking guy. Hey, man, what's up? The director from the movie Windy City. How many of you have seen the movie Windy City Heat, by the I way? I have. You sons of bitches. That's, I've done it before. Last time, it was, it was a wild push for it. I'm going to do it again. Every Kill Tony fan gets a homework assignment this week. That is, go watch Windy City Heat. I, think, I feel like the best place to see it is on YouTube. Yeah, it's on YouTube, right? Yeah. It is. And so watch it on YouTube. Set it on your thing to watch after the show, perhaps. And also take note of when it was made and the cast and the characters because it was so far ahead of its fucking time to think that that was one of the first ever reality slash prank anythings. Can I just check out my Instagram? I have a lot of dick pics, okay? <laughs> yeah. So get him a lot of likes. Enrique Chacon, you got the show started today. You showed everybody how the format works. Thank you so much. It's not easy. A new minute all the time. One of the newest residents in Austin, Texas. Okay, now here's a little fun fact for you. You remember I pulled a name out of the, or I accidentally dropped a name out of the bucket earlier, and then I put it back in, and I stirred the bucket around a fucking ton of times, but I looked at it before I put it back in, and the name that I pulled out is that exact name. 
So this person, whatever's about to happen, w is supposed to be on this stage tonight. The odds of that, I think, are one in like 400, 400 if there's yeah. 200. Yeah. yeah, or maybe he would say 6,000, but I mean... <laughs> Hey, fuck you! Fuck you! <laughs> yes! Make some noise for your first bucket pull of the night. We're gonna meet them all together. Seabass Matar, everybody. Seabass Matar. And I pre pull the next name. What up, what up, what up? My name is Seabass, y'all. Um, that's a nickname. It's not a real name, okay? It's a philosophy, it's an acronym. It's a way of life, okay? Seabass is spelled C-B-A-S. And it stands for can't buy anything expensive. <laughs> now, I know who's not Latino because you guys are like, what? Expensive? He didn't say it right. Bitch, I know. I can't afford the vow is what I'm trying to tell you. I'm the last dude you want to see on Wheel of Fortune. Can I get a vow? No. Okay, uh, expensive. Expensive it is. Can't buy anything expensive is a way of life, okay? When I go to the movies, I'm using, you know, coupons. I'm using the fucking gift cards. Me and my wife are going to the Dollar Tree before the movie. You know what I'm talking about? Ladies, we carry a little ass clutch. Stay your ass at home. We want the girls with the beach bag. <laughs> the fuck you gonna sneak in with a clutch? M&M's? Fuck out of here. Me and my girl, we watching Despicable Me. We got the wine tail, the yellow tail, the big one, $12, drunk as fuck on a Sunday, talking about para tu, watching the minions, am I right? All right, y'all, thank y'all so much. I'm Seabass Matar. Seabass Matar. Yes, sir. Thank and you for saying that right. Welcome to the show, Seabass. Absolutely, a pleasure. Is pleasure. that really how your name is spelled? No, nah, my real name is Sebastian. Everyone Sebastian. just calls me Seabass. I'm Hispanic, okay. so Sebas. Okay, Sebas. you're Mexican? Uh, Cuban, Chileno. But, hey, in Texas, we're all Mexican. Wait, what was the second thing? Cuban. Chileno. Chilean. Chileno. Michael, what does that mean? My oh, dog. he's from Chile. Hey, oh, okay. bro, get this Absolutely. man a map. I should have known that. Get this man a map. I thought it was Chilean. That's how we say it. No, in Chileno, the greatest well, country on planet Earth. Hey, hey, listen. I was born here, motherfucker, okay? <laughs> yeah. 100% citizen. Yeah. 100%. I don't, anybody who says that, I don't believe it. <laughs> you know who I've never heard say that? A white person. <laughs> A guy wearing a shirt like that. <laughs> I was born in America. Like, not a believable thing. How long you been doing stand-up, Seabass? Please tell me less than two months. <laughs> now nah, about six years. Oh, fuck. Yeah, about six years. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, shit. It happens, it happens. Wow, incredible. Where have you been doing this for six years exactly? So I started off in Miami, and then I've been out here for about a year and a half, give or take. Wow. And how's it been going out here? It's going, you know, it's going. Wow. Slowly but surely, out wow. here doing it. Can't buy anything expensive. More like, <laughs> more like can bomb all sets. You're not that great at this. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. We're working uh, on it. What do you do for work? Uh, I'm a server, bartender in a restaurant. How old are you? Uh, 29. 29 years old, 29. serving and bartending. What's your living situation? I uh, live with my wife. Oh, okay. You know, she must, she not my sugar mama, but she must splendor mama. Okay, you know? she keeps you warm since you're so chilly. What does she do? Uh, she's a wedding planner and event planner. Okay. Okay. Hispanics love weddings. That she's Hispanic too? 100% Cuban. 100% Cuban. 100% baby. Oh, shit. Damn. Oh, wait. She put mustard on your dick and then suck it off? You No. Cubans like mustard. No, we don't. Yeah, they I don't do. Know. No, yeah, they do. A listen. Have you ever had a Cuban sandwich? Motherfucker, have you had a Cuban sandwich? Fuck out of here. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Oh, D Madness is in the conversation. And taste is like a big deal to him. <laughs> There's mustard on Cuban sandwiches. No, there is, there is. Yeah, you're goddamn fucking Not right on my there dick, is. though. 100%. My wife would not put mustard on my dick. All right, all right. What is the most exciting thing she's ever done to you in the bedroom? Oh, no, nah, I'm a gentleman. I ain't about to say that out loud. Nah. 
the fuck are you talking? What show do you think you signed up for? I'm fucking married. I'm married. No, I'm good. I'm not going to put the my... The ring doesn't even fit you. Why is it so loose? Whose fucking on, ring is that man. over there? Okay, on, Gollum. Man. Well, whose ring is that? It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> fucking oh. Cubano Schmeagel over here. <laughs> puts the ring on his... Why are you so mad about love, Tony? Why are you so mad about love? Mad about love? Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? You're yelling about the ring. Your ring doesn't fit. Okay. And if it doesn't fit, you know... Okay, tell us, do you have any special skills or talents? Um, we, ch- we saw you nah, try to do nah, stand-up nah, comedy. Nah. Come on, there must be something. You ever win a competition? You ever have a news article written about you in the local newspaper? The nah, old- never, nothing like that, no. Anything? You mm. good at anything? Uh, cooking. I like cooking. Okay. That was my first uh, interest, but, okay. you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cooking. All right. Cooking's fun. And you've been doing stand-up six years. Why, yeah, going why, on six years. Why do you think your minute was so uh, ineffective tonight if you've been doing uh, it six years? If, if we could look at, if we, if we could get your report on why you think it didn't go good. I don't know. I just, uh, just I, I think I did well. I'm not going to front. Like, I felt like I did okay. Well, well, you're I'm, probably, not, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I crushed it. Breaking news. Definitely not. Definitely ain't crushing. Hold up. Breaking news. This is CNN, the Cuban News Network. Six out of ten. Six out of ten. <laughs> Baby. Baby. It's On a home the run scene, derby. our field reporter thinks he did good, everybody. Wow. Well, yeah, yeah. What do you think your best short joke is? What do you um, think it is? Did you do it? Was it in that minute? No, no, it definitely wasn't. Definitely wasn't. That's I want to. I want to know happened. what you think. Six years in the game. I want to see what your best. I'm gonna let you do one more quick joke. It's got to be less than twenty seconds. You got one of those, right? Uh, let's fucking hope. Uh, quick joke. All right, now we're just gotta stay in the pocket here. Um, why do Cubans talk so loud? Why? Because they still got salt water in their ears. Oh, shit. All right, my friend. You're leaving here with a little joke book and a gel blaster. Congratulations. Make some noise for Seabass Matar, everybody. These people trying their best. They moved to Austin. Everybody's trying to fucking make it. Everybody's trying to get a shortcut. And they're not even willing to tell us the craziest thing their wife does to them. He said, I can't do that. I'm married. That's when you can do it. That's for life. If it was a girlfriend two weeks in, I'd say you might be right. Maybe you shouldn't tell us. Son of a bitch. Make some noise for your next bucket pool. We're going to meet them all together. Anything can happen. You guys having fun? All right. Make some noise for Chris Beasley, everybody. Here we go. Chris Beasley. Oh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, Mainly because my wife's not here. Yeah, she's at home where she should be, you know. <laughs> Not like that. I live in San Francisco, pay $40 million in rent. Someone better be home, you feel me? <laughs> uh, originally from Texas, went to Catholic school in Texas. Serious one. My principal was um, a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the office a lot. Uh, <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. He didn't touch me. He was racist. Amen? <laughs> God is good. Won't he do it? Well, he will. Yes, Lord. Next you know, racism saves your ass. Literally. And I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Some people get uncomfortable with that joke because you realize the white kids got special treatment. They did. Um, Taught me a valuable lesson. White privilege can be tough. Some of y'all have to clinch or something. (laughs) Just Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, yeah, I mean, I can end it right there. That's fine. We had a good time. That was great. Chris Beasley. Absolutely. I like your fucking style. Came in, guns a blazing, said his wife's at home where she belongs, not afraid to make the wife at home mad. I love it. Fearless. Chris Beasley. How long you been doing stand-up? We're at four years. Four years. That's what a person at four years should fucking be like. Absolutely. Where at? Here in Austin? I started in Dallas, moved to San Francisco in 2020, and then I don't count 2020 because I couldn't work, but you know. So, when in 2020 exactly did you decide to move to, of all places, San Francisco? I have to know. Well, you would leave Dallas. You left Dallas. I left Dallas. In the year 2020. Yeah. Can Can I hope and pray that it's January? 
March 13th. Oh my God. Oh my God, that's like the weekend. The day, yes. That's like the main weekend where people are like, wait, what? We don't have to what tomorrow? <laughs> We're, we don't have to go to work? Wait, what? The flights were already booked. I didn't know. That is unbelievable. So yeah. let's go through it beat by beat, because this is fucking amazing, man. March 13th, I remember. That was like, I did. I was the last performer at the La Jolla Comedy Store before the pandemic, and I think it was the 12th and the 13th, or the 13th and the 14th, and then that week, just everything shut down. I remember it very clearly. Horrible. So you, how, how, why... Why did you plan on moving to San Francisco? Right, that's, that's the better question. There's no pandemic yet. There's just talk about it. People are like, there's something coming out of China. And everybody's like, no, there's not. And then yeah. cut to this. No, I wish it was uh, uh, awesome. Well, I mean, it's an awesome reason. First off, my wife's super liberal. Yeah. Oh, shit. No, it's not. <laughs> I, mean, I mean it this way. My wife is white. Her husband black. Like, she's super liberal. That's what I mean. And she works for Apple. And she oh. got a promotion, uh -huh. and we got moved to headquarters. That's oh, why we moved. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn. So there you go. Yep. All of a sudden, you move there, and Lost then what job. happens? So I quit. I was a teacher. Uh -huh. uh, quit, moved there. Uh, I told her we shouldn't move because she's not going to make nearly as much because of taxes. She don't listen. And um, <laughs> we get there. We argue for about a year because... <laughs> The world shut down, can't do comedy, I have no purpose. I'm angry, depressed, yelling. So me and my wife have been on Talkspace for years. It's uh, Yeah, oh, and wow. they are the very best. <laughs> yes. You sign up online and get a personalized match with a provider that's right for you, <laughs> typically within 48 hours. And as a listener of this podcast, you'll get $80 off your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash Tony. That's $80 off your first month. Just go to Talkspace.com slash Tony. I love it. So let's talk about more about Chris Beasley. Your set was fucking so entertaining. A rock solid four years. So how did you catch up after the year off in San Francisco? I mean, grinding. So everybody was flattened, right? So I could work with some of the comics that have been doing it 20 years and obviously other open micers. And so I just put my head down, trying not to, you know, be upset and depressed for a year. Just grinded and... I now am a host at the Improv there. I love it. Grinding. I work at three of the clubs, but that's the most prestigious grindin', one. Grinding. Yes, sir. Grinding. Dun 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 You guys don't even know what I'm talking about. It's the clips. Yes. Grinding. I hate that I don't know enough hip hop. Uh, I am. Uh, I'm a little. I might be a little more hip hop than you. You got me. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, black people. If you're here. <laughs> and black people, black people. If He's you're right here, here. He's right here. He's all right. you black people out there. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about? Clips grinding, right? You know the song that I'm talking about? Thank you. you don't. Thank you, brother. Hell yeah. He Jesus don't know. Jesus Christ. Yes, you do. Uh, How does it go? He doesn't know. <laughs> it sounds like this. Right. You know that song? Do you know what I'm talking? There you go. There yeah, there is. you go. Who gives a fuck? We're way off track here. That's it, uh, that's Chris, it. what do you think is the most interesting thing about you? Um, the pedophile joke's real. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, shit. I, uh, I had two encounters. I mean, other kids did. I just was at the school. Yeah. Um, but uh, one of them... We actually were dating the same girl when it happened. Don, you ever had any experiences with any pedophiles? I know that you. Uh... <laughs> what are you? What are you getting at? <laughs> I know it's hard to be pedophiled when you're the pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tony makes a joke. Everybody laughs. Fuck you, man. I've never touched a kid in my life. You pricks. I've already got two guys I'm going to beat the fuck out of when this show's over, so. <laughs> I love it. Well, Chris, amazing stuff. Do you have any special skills or talents other than stand-up comedian? Um, dating. Yeah, I'm good at that. I mean, I'm married. I, I succeeded. I think I'm done. What, like, can you give us one of your tricks or tips to being a great dater? Ooh, bet, bet, bet. Okay, first off, uh, figure out what each of you provides. So do some uh, Myers-Briggs, no astrology. That shit's bullshit. Wait, provide some... Wait, what? what? Myers-Briggs? You know what Myers-Briggs is? No. Y'all don't know what Myers... 
No, man, you didn't even know what Clips Grinding was. It's one of like the great hip hop songs out of the Yo, early okay, 2000s. Th- this is dope. Like okay, this. so year three is a bad idea, but for our anniversary, I gave my wife her Myers Briggs score. Um, don't do that. Don't do that. She was upset. Yeah, this is a true story. Because we were struggling. Like in relationships, year three is tough. And so we were struggling. We were getting mad at each other. I was like, look, I think I can solve this shit. Let me just look at us. I ch- checked uh, Myers Briggs. I saw exactly how we lined up differently. Coaster up on it. Game. Seven years later, we still rock it. I promise. You ever I cheated promise. on your wife? Huh? You ever cheated on your wife? Have I cheated? No. What the fuck? <laughs> Did you not listen to the last comic? No. <laughs> Chris Beasley, I love your stuff. How long are you in Austin for? Uh, I'm doing all the 35 visiting family, so I'm up and down this whole week. San Antonio to Dallas, back and forth. So I'm around. What? Does that make you sense? Just, you just named a freeway and then a bunch of cities. That's what I'm How doing. How long are you in Austin for? Well, tonight, right now, and okay. then I'll head right to Waco. Now. I know you're here right now. <laughs> Got that one. I see him. He's right there. I can move. I can go wherever, but I'm just chilling in Dallas and, and uh, till Sunday, so <gasps> I can up and down 35. Does that make sense? Yeah, it that does. Sense, right? Up and okay. down 35. That is indeed the freeway. I was just wondering <laughs> when you're in town. Very, uh, Don, were you going to say something? No, you said that. You were talking about the freeway, and then you found out it was the freeway he was talking about. <laughs> that is true. It is a beautiful 69.8 degrees at the front of the room right now. You got to love it. The AC is bumping. Uh, thank you so much, Chris Beasley. Uh, amazing set. Very thank fun you. time. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Here's a big joke book ah. by the great Bonsai. He makes the best handmade leather goods in all of Austin. And you just got a big, awesome joke book. You know what? Let's get another bucket pull out while we still can. Make some noise for your next comedian. We're going to meet them all together. Well, maybe we know him. Make some noise for Nick Devlin, everybody. This could be someone we've seen before. Nick Devlin, everyone. Ah, here he is. The Kill Tony debut of Nick Devlin, everybody. Hey, what's up, guys? Just got my first haircut in Texas. I sat down in that chair, and the barber was like, all right, on a scale of one to ten, how racist do you want to look? I was like, I don't know, seven? And then I walked out looking like this. I was, um, I was homophobic once. I was held at gunpoint by a gay guy. Yeah, that was rough. Um, unfortunately, when I was a child, I was part of a school shooting. Yeah, I was also homeschooled. So, it's just my mom shooting my dad. Yeah, it was weird. We were like relieved after. I was like, whoa. Uh, I was... I was pulled over recently and arrested on a technicality. The technicality was that I was drunk. (laughs) All right, I'm Nick Devlin. Thank you. I appreciate it. Nick Devlin. Thank you. Okay. Nick, 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 Nick. How are you, my friend? I'm good, Tony. How are you? How did that... What the fuck was that? It was a burp. Whose burp was that? It was yours. Was that not yours? Am I tripping? What? What was that noise? Guys, what was that noise? Was that? Does anybody know? Everybody's just goofing around. Bro, Okey-dokey. Wasn't, it wasn't me, bro. It's okay. It it's just me. a live podcast heard by millions. Who gives a shit about um, a random yeah. noise? It was not me. <laughs> <laughs> Yippee! Fuck yeah. <laughs> Seemed like Love it was it. a belch. It was a belch. It did. It sounded, like, it sounded almost sounded like a soundboard of some kind, but uh, nobody has one of those around here. Anyway. Uh, Nick Devlin, let's talk about it. How do you feel like that went? I felt like it was better than my last time, but not that great. Like I feel like it was an. You've been on the show before. Yeah, it was like five. And or it was six. worse than that. It yeah. was about five or six. <laughs> yeah, it was worse. Five Obviously. or six what? Weeks ago. Five or six weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. My God, I do not remember you at all. How's that possible? What did we find out about you five or six weeks ago? I had glasses. My Uh hair was longer. Okay. I was kind of a faggot. Yeah, it was... No, you don't just get to use that word as a safety valve when you're bombing. You don't get to do that. You have to earn it. You have to earn the use of a by getting laughs other ways. See, I get to 
f it all I want because I've already earned my trust with the audience because they're a bunch of f it's and I get to yeah. do that. Thank you. Thank you, D Madness. <laughs> when you hear his bass solo, you know that I said f it three times in a row. Okay. We have to beep all these, right? Okay, perfect. Okay. Thank you, censorship on YouTube. Um, so, Nick Devlin, what did we not find out about you five or six weeks ago that you think would be interesting for us to find out on the show? Yeah, I think I have some really bad... So, I live alone with a cat, and I have some really bad habits be uh -huh. just because I live alone. Like, um, for example, I usually pee in the sink. Why do you do that? Because it's, e it's easier. Like, I know it's not... I know it's sh kind of shameful, but... Like, it's just, it's easier, because I have two sinks that are closer to me, and one toilet, which is farther from the sinks. So uh, I usually, I usually, I, I'm just being honest, I usually pee in the sink. My friends don't like it. When you say your friends, are but you I, talking about friends that visit? Like, what do you mean? You just say yeah. you live alone with your cat. Are you calling your cat your friend? Who's the friend that doesn't like it? Yeah, I don't think my cat cares, but my friends, when they come over, I'm like, because usually, like, I'm, I, I, I think it's funny. Like, habada, it's like, habada, habada, habada. Okay, hold on. He asked to who the friends were. Okay, so you think it's funny, so you show them that you pee in the sink? No, or? no, no, no. So no, how no. do they know that you pee in the sink? I tell them, I tell them. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What do you do for work? How do you blend in with society? <laughs> What do you do? So I work remotely for a biotech laboratory. Right. Okay, great. I'm going to get laid off, though, by the way. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Are you pissing in the urine samples that you're supposed to provide? <laughs> oh, that's your laugh. I hate you. Oh, Psycho. God. Take a little Sorry. joke book. Goodbye. There you go. There he goes. You don't have to high-five these people, Don. Please don't do that. I don't want them to feel like they accomplished anything here tonight. Put the mic where you found it over there, will you? On the X over there? There you go. Yeah. What a dick, man. Yeah. There he goes, everybody. All right. Let's have some fun, shall we? We have a new regular on this show that's on an absolute warpath. I don't want to hype him up too much, but this might be one of the great, great stars of the future of Kill Tony. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, make some goddamn noise for the man, the myth, the one and only Cam Patterson, everybody. Here he is. Oh, shit. The real deal. My dick ain't that big. That's not funny, bitch. That's why I envy lesbians. Any lesbians in here? Good, let's, you got a lesbian, bitch. You a cowboy, fuck nigga. <laughs> but I envy lesbians for real, dog. cause they get to pick they dick. And I ain't get that choice. Let me, let me explain, like a lesbian can have sex with her girlfriend, she go, oh my gosh, this is so good, go deeper. All she gotta do is detach her six, go to her arsenal real quick. <laughs> Put on a 10, and now she finna fuck her life up. <laughs> if I'm having sex with my girlfriend, and she tell me to go deeper, I'ma just call my homeboy. <laughs> Cause I know Daquan dick way bigger than mine, dog. Uh -huh. That guy so much, it's me doing it. Wow, exactly one minute. And another unbelievable set, undoubtedly the set of the night so far. Cam Patterson with your, what is this, five, six, seventh, first minute, new like, minutes? It's like five, I think five right now. Yep, I love yeah, it. Yeah. All of them have been absolutely amazing, incredible. That one, another one. Don, this is your first time seeing Cam. If, if he needed a little extra, you bring your friend over. Good yeah, job. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. We running trains on, but you want to come too, Don? Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, I would like that. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you, I can tell you from a lot of late nights at the store, Don Barris has a famously huge cock and balls, everybody. Why don't, you, why don't you show the people real quick? No, I'm you, not going to show. I'll describe it. I can put both hands around it and the head sticks out. True. It's what Dr. True. Heverich did during my circumcision has been talked about my entire life complimentarily. And the reason I bring that, Dr. Heverich passed away last week. 
you know, uh, he may no longer be with us, but his artwork lives on in the head of my <laughs> cock. <laughs> it is true. Not a lot of people know this, but the Pringles can was actually modeled off of Don's penis. So, You shut your goddamn mouth, man. That's right. <laughs> Much like a Pringles can, I'll put a lid on it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. So, Cam, what's been going on this week? Tell us more about your life, uh, what's happening. I mean, I know you're absolutely thriving. I put you up for your first time in this room yeah, doing yeah. stand-up on my show last week. I saw it. That's true. <laughs> Deep Madness. He's who I a do goddamn believe liar. is on cocaine tonight. A lot of extra <laughs> energy from Deep Madness tonight. Chatty, a lot of, lot of guitar riffs back there. I do believe Deep Madness stole Hans's coke. Uh, he damn near had shit. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So, uh, what's going on in life, Cam? I did, I did those show. You had me open up. You had me go after Ron White. That was pretty dope. You know what I'm yep. First time in the room, he had to follow Ron White. That yeah. was by design. And you did it with great ease. Everybody was watching the monitors talking about how great you were. The story of the night, literally. Oh. It was incredible yeah. to see. Yeah, that's so dope. Yeah. I got to sit there. I got to sit there with a lot of the uh, young, up and coming comics that are like doing the feature and the experienced opening acts regularly and the look of fear. Fear that was over their face <laughs> as they realized that you're coming for their jobs is I'm on uh, the way, baby. Come on. I'm yeah, on the way. there is no doubt about it. He really is. For someone with only two years of experience, you have an incredible appetite for laughs per minute. Yeah. Which is usually something that happens to people 5, 10, 15 years in. They're like, man, I have to edit this shit down. There's a lot of people that tell me, oh, I'd sign up for, I'm funny, I'd sign up for Kill Tony, but I'm not like a one minute comedian. You know, I need more time than that. And that is just the dumbest fucking thing anyone could say. You're retarded. Yeah, you have to be funny multiple times in a minute. Even if you're doing 60 minutes, you need yeah. to make them laugh a lot. And you seem to have an incredible understanding for that. Where do you think that comes from? How? My, my, my pop's real funny, you know what I'm saying? Like, my dad funny as shit. Yeah. He's been funny my whole life, so I was just watching his big ass do funny shit. <laughs> he is a big guy. I met him for the first time last night. Yeah. Yeah. We're all going to be drinking after this at Mitzi's. I'm excited to catch up with him. If he's, any, if he's half as much fun as your uh, uncle... Uh, <laughs> he's the greatest man they in the world. They don't even know yet. This shit, we finna turn this bitch into a goddamn trap house. He you, you know what I say? I want to do that. <laughs> Come on, Don. Fuck yeah. with the Don. Come on. Goddamn man. right. Don's from Michigan, so he's basically, you know, Andy has a huge dick, so he's basically black. <laughs> you can say it. He's just a black yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What else, Cam? Anything else before I, I let sushi you go? I for the first time, and I don't like that shit. <laughs> y'all can keep that shit to y'all selves. I think that shit is just lazy cooking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, I don't want to cook this fish. You a bitch, dog. <laughs> I hate you. I've been shitting for three weeks, nigga. <laughs> I'm fucking, that shit is so upsetting. My, my ass just spit water right now. <laughs> so fuck sushi. That's my take on sushi. And I can attest to the fact that you have been having stomach problems. I yeah. was waiting. There's one main green room restroom uh, up there. And uh, I had to pee. You didn't. Yeah. I fucked it up, dog. I had to pee. He did. I was fucking it up, He dog. did. It was gang violence in there. Uh, I, I saw, I saw some bloods and some drips. You know what I mean? <laughs> That was absolutely incredible. <laughs> hey, Tony, can I ask a question? Yeah. Oh, there's a gentleman that just left, and I was going to ask, you want to play a trick on him? Okay, when he comes back in, I got you bent over, and I'm fucking you hard. And <laughs> <laughs> he comes in, and he says, what's going on here, for goodness sakes? Uh, yeah, and then you pass it to me, now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, we say we're just kidding around, then you sit back down. <laughs> it's just a little prank. <laughs> It'll be fine, yeah. We'll blur it on YouTube. It'll be great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is a good idea. I like this Hell idea. Hell yeah. I like Come working on, with you, man. Come on, talk to me. <laughs> we think the same. <laughs> <laughs> 
I love it. Cam, you are an absolute fucking star. You are one of the things when I, when it's Sunday or Monday morning and I'm thinking about this show, you're one of the things that keeps me excited and keeps me inspired because this is what it's all about. It's the fucking people coming up the ranks. You're, this is the only show ever in comedy history where you get to literally see the future like a crystal ball and this guy's part of it. Make some noise one more time for the great Cam Patterson, everybody. Cam Patterson, everyone. And I pulled another name out of the bucket. Here we go. We're going to meet them all together. Not easy to follow Cam at all. We've had quite a few uncles on the history of the show. This is another uncle. We're going to meet them all together. Uncle Simi, everybody. Or Uncle Simi, perhaps. Here we go. Uncle. Okay. Uncle Simi. How's everybody doing? Uh, my name is Uncle Simi. Uh, it's a nickname I got from my uh, niece, actually. She couldn't really say my name. So she'd say, Uncle Simi. And so, so my name's Uncle Sam, actually. So I'm from Fort Worth, Texas, if you can't tell. Um, it's actually a new addition. I got this cowboy hat at Bucky's, of all places. Um, I was looking for just something cool to wear for July 4th, and it just turned out that uh, this looked a hell of a lot better than all that other bullshit. So um, last week... I don't know how much time I have. Last week, I got out of a really interesting Airbnb situation. Uh, I don't know if you know this, Airbnb, they have immersive experiences now. Um, I should have looked at the reviews, the, uh, and I had my notes, but I'll try to remember the review. The review basically was like, don't take your fucking family here. It's a sin. Hashtag pure evil one star. They diagnosed me with bipolar. And we'll talk about that later, I guess. Oh, yes. <laughs> you, you will be talking about it later with your uh, many personalities that you have, I do believe. Wow. Okay. What should I call you? Uh, you can call me Sam. Okay, Sam. So, uh, you know, you gave us a lot of information. You're from Fort Worth. You're yes, uh, from Texas. You got the hat at Bucky's. I you, did. Then you questioned how much time you had left uh, at that point. <laughs> I don't Still know where to look. 33 seconds in with no jokes done, you questioned how much Damn time it. was left. And then you told us a story about an Airbnb, but turns out you forgot your notes, uh, which I guess had the punchlines on them. Uh, nothing memorized whatsoever. Don Barris. Have you ever taught math classes? Math classes yeah. or myth classes? Math. Math. I was pretty good at math. So no, but in high school I did. Oh, that was glad I brought that up. Sorry, yeah. I don't know where you're... There was a lot of answer there, uh, Uncle Sorry. Sam. So, okay. How bipolar do you think you are, buddy? It's debatable. Uh, yeah, I know. Okay. It probably looks pretty bipolar right now. But yep, pretty yeah. bipolar right now. I'm on Tony, the meds. Tony, excuse me for Off a second. the meds? On the meds. Okay, here we go. This guy just came back. He's back. You wouldn't believe what she wanted to do the minute you got up. <laughs> Luckily, Don here's a gentleman and uh, was very, very, very polite. But she, this one, you got you to gotta keep an eye on this. You got to put her in a yonder bag or something when you fucking... Okay. So, Sam, you said you're on meds? 100%. Okay. How long have you been on meds? At least two weeks. Two weeks? Well, I technically got out of the hospital two weeks ago. What were you in the hospital the for? Let's talk about it, Sam. As, um, as direct with the answer as you can be. My family thought I was going to kill myself. Okay. Why did your family think that you were going to kill yourself? This is a doozy. So I know it a, is. I'm a great interviewer, and I'm trying to get to it. You don't have to say it's a doozy. Just tell the fucking story. It was a text Okay. that said, I have intentions of harming myself. Okay. And I said that in a massive panic. And I, after I got out, I realized I didn't mean to say that. I was so confused why well, everybody thought I was trying to kill myself, uh -huh. even though I didn't. I was why, what the fuck is going <laughs> on here? Okay, so you weren't trying to kill yourself? No. No, not at all. You were just no. kind of having like a little episode. You, yeah, sure. Okay. That's the theory. Okay. 
Absolutely. I agree with Have you theory. ever talked to any therapist? I'm with a counselor and a psychiatrist and okay. a family counselor. You have it all right now. May I make a recommendation? If any of those people are ever unavailable, go to Talkspace.com and use the promo code <laughs> Tony. Tony. Tony, get $80 yes. off your first month and you sh show your support for the show. <laughs> okay, so let's talk some more, Sam, because I, I like you. I think there's, I think you're a good guy. I think you're likable. Have you ever done stand-up comedy before? In the first time. This is his first time, everybody. He's out here trying out. That's one of the big parts of getting diagnosed as bipolar. First, you get a psychiatrist, then a therapist, then they put you on meds, and then you get to start stand-up comedy, everybody. Because of the trauma. The exact order of the events. The trauma. Oh, That's my story. <laughs> <laughs> it really is wild how many uh, people are drawn into this industry. What are you doing? Gauging how freaked out I am. You're not even, you're much calmer than most people. Oh, good. Yeah, that it's makes very me feel good. The, 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 <laughs> the bipolar meds are helping you out tremendously. Mood stabilizers. Right They're mood stabilizers. Definitely. Yes. Okay. So, did something set this off, this bipolar thing? Is this a newer thing? Have you always struggled with mental health issues? I've always struggled. Six months, super depressed, can't get out of bed, barely making it to work, uh -huh. and then six months oh. of good and then sometimes a little what are you doing with your money you so know this has a happy and then you're ending. back down and so now there's a diagnosis so right this is kind okay. of a break what do you do life. what are some hobbies or some exciting things that you do in life that bring you joy i uh i'm an audio engineer by trade oh that's why i make most of my money okay and i also drum as well you drum how I also how drum. long how long have you been drumming for I'm sorry how long have you been drumming for? since i was a kid five years old really yeah but i'm not professional but i played in church so oh you played at church i made money in church oh yeah. wow okay and, and i don't and look how god rewarded you with uh <laughs> bipolar incredible whatever that is no mercy whatsoever this god of it's ours coming someday someday you think you could do a drum solo really yeah you know what? Let's have a little let's, oh, have, let's yeah. have a little good side of the story. I don't know if you guys know this, but the, historically on the show, we have a little thing that we do where uh, someone can challenge the resident drummer, obviously Michael Gonzalez in this case, to uh, what we call a Mexican drum off, where he does a drum solo and then our drummer does a drum solo, and whoever wins gets to be the full time drummer on Kill Tony. And if uh, if Michael um, loses, they have to switch roles. So he has to be an audio engineer in Fort Worth with bipolar. And in which case, Uncle Sam would be the new, wait, Uncle Sam, wait, Uncle Sam, or Sam or Simmy or whichever one of you I'm talking to right now. Uh, you're you're going to want that symbol in a second. So I would, I would put the hat anywhere else. Sam. Okay. All right. I guess that's one way to do it, Sam. So... Ladies and gentlemen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, drumming for perhaps a life-changing experience. This is a solo by the one and only Uncle Sam, everybody. There you go, Uncle Sam, everybody. <laughs> not bad, not I bad at all. But I would now, have bet my life he couldn't have done that. <laughs> that was absolutely incredible, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know the if it's incredible. Bipolar bear himself, Uncle Sam. And now, Sam, stay right over here. Stay, Sam, stay over here. Over here, Sam. And now, defending his throne, undefeated all time in Mexican drum ops, this is Michael Gonzalez.
lot better than you. I mean, Jesus, Michael. I mean, you didn't have to beat him up that bad. What the fuck? I didn't realize, uh, Mr. Nice Guy over here, then all of a sudden he waits until he has an opponent with mental illness to fucking just <laughs> do an extra 45 seconds of hitting every fucking thing on the kit. Oh, oh come yeah. on. Bullshit. Oh, no, don't point at him. Don't point at Fuck him. yeah. How many of you have Uncle Sammy winning that? Uh, that? Oh, wow. <laughs> no, no, Man. don't even raise your, put your hat back. By that kind of response, you would have thought it was Uncle Laser, not Uncle Sammy. My God. Oh, shit. How many of you have Michael Gonzalez? <laughs> Amazing. Uncle Sammy. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. For the first time ever in the show's history, because you are bipolar, I'm going to give you both a big joke book and a little joke book. Depending on what kind of day you're having, you can fucking enjoy either one of those. It's all, it's all good. Don is apologizing to me because he keeps high-fiving people as they come on. <laughs> oh, he was fucking god-awful, man. <laughs> No, oh, we love all different shapes and sizes and state of minds on this show. We get a lot of this. Um, a lot of different characters. So let's keep it going. You want another bucket pull, huh? Make some noise. Let's go with Nick Thomas, everybody. Here we go. Nick Thomas. What's up, everybody? How y'all doing tonight? All right, so I learned this the other week. I learned that the biggest consumer of BDSM sex toys in America is white people, which is a little wild to me. That means we have to role play slavery to come. <laughs> you guys think that's cultural appropriation? What if I sing spirituals while my wife's pegging me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's all right, guys, don't worry. I married a Mexican. I'm one of the good ones. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this. When you marry a Mexican, you get a stepkid. <laughs> it's pretty, too. She didn't have a kid when we were dating. I don't know where this thing came from. I got down on one knee. I was like, baby, will you make me the happiest man in the world? And this kid just materialized out of nowhere. 15 years old, two jobs, immediately. I don't... <laughs> Thank you. That's my time. Thank you, guys. Nick Thomas. A good set. Thank you. Oh, Hell yeah. Thank you, guys. You killed it. Hey! <laughs> Stupid. Okay, Nick, let's talk about it. How long you been doing stand-up? Uh, I did stand-up for six years in El Paso, where I'm from. I took two years off. Uh, not, so I've been doing it a year straight since being in Austin. So, collectively seven years. Yeah, okay, Don asked me to ask you, why the dress? Why the dress? Well, fun fact, it's a dress if you're wearing underwear. Whoa. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you got nothing under there, huh? Neither do I. Hey, that's for me to know and for everyone in here to be uncomfortable about. That's wow. Well, show this guy, Vic, in the front <laughs> row. I love it. Nick, where do you meet your Mexican wife at? Uh, in El Paso, where I'm from. We went to college together. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. What college is in El Paso? Well, no good ones, man. Uh, University, University of Texas at El Paso. UTEP. Okay. What did you study there? We both did theater. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So Surprise. you have some acting experience. I do. Can you give us a little bit? Can we get a little taste of uh, some acting from you? Can you perhaps play a scene? Yes, Don Barris, famous actor. Can I pretend right. that I'm going into a 7-Eleven he's working behind the counter? Yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah. do it. <laughs> hey, what's a dude with a dress on for? <laughs> you wearing underwear? Well, uh, fun fact, it's only a skirt if you're wearing underwear. <laughs> Can I help hey, I'm you? Out. I'm out. I'm sorry. All right, there you go. A little acting, a little Shakespearean acting by... Uh, Didn't Nick. do any improv, so... Okay, so Nick, uh, how many kids do you have? I have one kid. Just one? Just the one. How have you been able to only maintain one kid with a Mexican wife? Birth control. Ah, you put, she started it after the? No, no, uh, well, so it is my stepkid. She's actually my stepdaughter. And uh, uh. after the 
The, oh, calm down. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> Some <laughs> asshole. I mean, that was <laughs> incredible. Dude, Just like, that ain't your fucking kid, dude. <laughs> Assholes. I know, there. man. Well, you Everybody. said that I fuck it, so that was kind of mean. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, you do have a pretty fucking wild side, Don. I mean, you remember, <laughs> you remember what happened when you ran over that? that I side? remember. Yeah. You want to tell the people what happened? I'm not going to say another w- word. Go back to him. No, <laughs> come on. I think you should tell these people because it'll give them a better understanding of who you are when you were driving in Michigan a few weeks ago. You remember what happened? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, I, I should say this right off the bat. The only re- this is a joke, and the only reason I say <laughs> this, I, I want people to know I've never eaten the vagina of a squirrel. Okay, uh, do you still want me to tell this story? Okay. I'm driving in northern Michigan. I hit something with my car. Now, has anyone ever been in an accident before? Yep. Yeah. All oh, that adrenaline goes through, and it's like crazy. When I was thinking the adrenaline was going through me, I kept thinking, what did I just fucking hit? So when the car came to a stop, I'm on the ground, I'm looking everywhere, and then I feel it. And I, it was not doing very well. For 45 minutes, I watch this, and at the end, we lost a squirrel that evening. Uh, How stupid do you have to be? The easiest thing ever. Go, ah! Oh! <laughs> All right, so crazy thoughts start going through my mind. I first think, what if this is a mummy squirrel? And this mummy squirrel has all these, what do they call their children? Chipmunks? So there's all these chipmunks (laughs) waiting for their mummy squirrel to come back. And I started getting mad at myself because I thought, I just ruined a family. Then about 40 minutes, I looked at it and it did not look good. And so I thought, what could I do to make this squirrel's last moments on this earth beautiful? So wait, this squirrel's pussy. Uh, now, real quick, here's what I found out that night. Did you know? I shut up, man. That night, I found out. Did you know? A dead squirrel's vagina tastes exactly the same as one that's alive. Could I describe that taste with one word? Yes, nutty. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Fuck yeah, Don Barris is here, everybody. Make sure you check out the Big Three podcast on the Don Barris podcast. How come this network. chick wouldn't applaud for me? Thank ah, you. Ah, there you go. All right. Uh, do you have any special skills or talents, Nick Thomas? Uh, I'm also a chef. Oh, wow. Boring. Okay. All right. All right. Um, do you have any special moves in the bedroom that you do? Uh, I recently learned that your dick goes in the front hole. Okay. That's, you know what? Now that I think of it, that's probably why I only have one kid. All right. All right, Nick. Well, I'm trying my best with you. Weirdest thing in your refrigerator right now? Uh, I have some kimchi that I made myself that I found out the other day was not even the right vegetable, and I don't know what it is now, man. I'm scared to open it. What should you use? I don't know. Haven't figured it out yet. You don't know what vegetable you use? I was pretty high. Okay. Get rid of this guy. He's bringing the show down. Yeah, I agree. (laughs) I agree. But you did have a good set. I'm going to give you a big joke book. There you go. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Nick Thomas, everybody. There goes Nick Thomas. All right, things are moving smoothly. I pulled to get a female comedian up. We've had no ladies up tonight, so I got one. Is that okay? All right, representing the women here tonight. Make some noise. 60 seconds uninterrupted goes to Karina Reyes, everybody. Karina Reyes. Have you guys ever had sex yeah. with someone that kept their glasses on? Yeah. yeah, he was like, if I'm not wearing them, I can't see you. And I was just like, why do you think I took mine off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went on a date with a doctor thinking this will be good. But then he told me he was into BDSM. If you don't know what that is, just ask Tony. (laughs) But just imagine choking, pain, being told what to do. It's like having immigrant parents. (laughs) Like, does it look like I'm into that? (laughs) Well, yes, I am. (laughs) He calls me master because I have a master's degree. 
Yeah, I have a master's degree in environmental engineering. Like, I can read code, but I can't read red flags. Fuck yeah. I like it. Karina Reyes. You're like a nerd with balls. You're a courageous little dork, aren't you? Yeah. I like your style. Thank you. How long have you been doing stand-up? Almost five years. Five years. It seems that way. Very, very good. Uh, where at? L.A. In L.A. Okay. Wow, you're a little bit edgy for uh, someone that started in L.A. five years ago. What brings you to Austin? Your show. Perfect. How long are you in town for? I leave tomorrow. Amazing. And you're uh, on a flight back to L.A. tomorrow? Yep, 7 a.m. tomorrow. Okay, very good. What, what airline are you flying? American Airlines. That's a good airline. Okay, good job. I was expecting spirit Well, I'm from an engineer. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, how long have you been in town? Uh, since last week. Okay. What did you get to do in Austin this week? I did the mothership, and then I did like 11 shows. You did the open mic here at the mothership? Yes. How did that go? It went really good, mm -hmm. but they didn't ask me back, so. <laughs> well, it's really, I mean, yeah, you have to really, you have to do a few to, yeah. They have to really, <laughs> it's not like a one-time thing, just to let you know. That's oh, not like a loss. Okay. It's not like America's Got Talent or anything <laughs> like that. You have to keep coming I mean, back. I was on America's Got Talent in Mexico. Oh, is that is it called America's Got Talent in Mexico? <laughs> is that what they call it there? Because that's a fucking ripoff. <laughs> we have those too. We're starting to get some ripoff fucking. The no, it's called bit. Tengo Talento, Mucho Talento. Oh, wow. For some See. reason, I'm hard as a rock right now. I don't know why. I don't know what that means, but I guess I'm into whatever that is. <laughs> I love it. Karina, very fun. How do you make a living? I work as an electrical engineer. Wow, look at you. That is absolutely incredible. How long have you been doing that? Um, since I was 24, so like eight years. Amazing, amazing. So you have like your own life, your own place. You have a boyfriend? Yes. Okay, how long have you been with him? Like five months. All right, what does he do? He is a cancer researcher. How does he handle the puss? <laughs> I mean, he's six foot three. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, good. You can't, you can't say stay niente with that guy, am I right? <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Where did you meet this six foot three? Is he Mexican as well? No, he's from Lithuania. From Lithuania? Wow, he's a pale, tall, white guy. Oh my goodness, look at you. Yeah, he doesn't have a green card, so I was like, he's only dating me for that, but at least I met the only guy in LA that wants to get married. Okay, yeah. Why have a green card when you can have a brown bitch? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Where'd you guys go on your first date? Uh, a diner. A diner? Because okay. he's sober. Oh. Podcast legend Don Barris with his. Uh, you gonna take it? It's his mom. Oh shit! Karina roasting Don right now. <laughs> I can't talk right now. Just picked up the phone. I can't talk right now. And then hung up. <laughs> Amazing. And I was gonna speak Spanish to you. Cucaracha la bamba, señorita, polo loco. So you guys went to a diner. What was it, like Mel's Diner? Or? Uh, I forgot. It was like a 90s diner. Okay, maybe Norm's? Probably. Okay, probably. All <laughs> right, so you guys go to a diner, and then what happens? And then he was like, do you want to watch The Last of Us? And he really sold me on it, and I was like, let's go to my place. Oh, Boy, shit. You fucking stupid. Oh, shit. <laughs> the Last of Us. This is just the beginning. <laughs> My goodness. So you take him back to your place, this lanky Lithuanian fucking <laughs> B-level basketball player. And then what happens? And then we watch three hours of The Last of Us. Three hours. That's how long it took for him to uh, Lithuania? Well, <laughs> I don't know. Well what, well, what I would do is like I would get like really close to his face and talk to him. <laughs> And then I would like move my head and he'd be like, is this girl crazy? Like, is she just getting me here for games? And then I kept doing it until he finally made the move. Damn. 
Um, look at you, you little. You just take what you want. I love it. <laughs> Did you think she was going to kiss me there? <laughs> I was I was really hoping she was going to spit in your mouth. Well, not a lot of people know this, but Don Barris famously used to have people at the comedy store, females specifically, females He'll have to only, pay me for that. spit in his mouth. Uh, <laughs> and all that it would take for that to happen is the audience would have to chant, spit in his mouth, spit in his mouth, spit <laughs> in his mouth. Come on, Don, for old time's sake. It would be no, podcast hold on, history. Hold on, hold on. Uh, I want the guy with the beard to do it to me. Uh, oh, yeah. shit. Will you do it, sir? Will you do it? You better not. No, I'm joking. I'm not doing no, it. No, 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 no. Will you do it? Stand up. Will you spit in his mouth for us real quick? How many of you think she should sp- spit in his mouth? <laughs> I'm not spit. You're not spitting. Now, oh, you ref- you refuse to do the spitting? It, I didn't want to do it without his consent. He, he's given consent. Now will you spit in his mouth? Oh, look at this little cock block over here. Oh. Oh, how about Wait, this? this guy, how about this you guy? spitting in my mouth then? All right. Will, will you let her spit in your mouth? All right, I'll spit. do that. Come on up here. Hold on, wait a second. <laughs> hold, on, can... hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. on. I just heard her go. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta oh be just kind of gentle. Here we go. This is What is your name? I'd like to know people before their saliva touches my mouth, I need their name. Uh, Samantha. My birthday's on Wednesday. Okay. No one cares when your birthday is. What's your name? What's her name? Uh, s- s- Make some Samantha. noise for Samantha, everybody. It- and one more time, for the first time in Kill Tony history, let's all say it together. Spit in your mouth. 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 Ah! Yes. Tony. You'll never, you'll never believe this. I could taste cum. <laughs> <laughs> That's yours? Then I kind of did you spit in my mouth. <sighs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, get your fucking lips off him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. How about a fucking hand for Don Barris, everybody? How about a hand for Samantha? Hey, let's get Samantha to show her breasts. No, no, no. Ah. I love it. This is the type of chaos that I absolutely love. Karina. I find you to be so interesting. Can you give us another fun fact about your life or something like that? I mean, um, what else about you? I was supposed you? to be born a twin. Oh. But I'm also a magician. So when my mom was pregnant, I made the other one disappear. Oh, my goodness. I, I think you're also a murderer. <laughs> wow, that is incredible. <laughs> so is there like pieces of the twin inside of you somewhere? Like The glasses. All right. <laughs> Right. Could I have her jerk me off? No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> She's from L.A. She could meet to us at any point. From, Anything can happen here. I'm from Compton. Oh, wow. Oh, shit. Oh, my goodness. That yeah, is I incredible. went to the same high school as Kendrick Lamar. Oh, ah. so what? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Did they tell you anything about Kendrick when he was at the school? Is that a thing that the school's proud of? They didn't know who, that he was going to be popular. Ah, uh, right. Back then, he was just some kid with ADHD trying to get through, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, that's right. You guys don't know <laughs> fucking rap references in the room. <laughs> <laughs> mad, the, the shit that I hear d Madness say. I did not <laughs> see in the script where he had lines. So. I know. It is incredible. Someone someone missed the script reading earlier. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Karina, 
I love your style. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm giving you Thank a big you. joke book. Thank you so much, Karina. You're going home with a gel blaster as well. You're going that way. Thank you. One more time for Karina, everybody. You know, I was about to make a smooth descent into ending this show, but then I was handed this piece of paper right here. I do believe... I do believe Hans Kim is racing here right now so that he doesn't have to challenge somebody next Can I week. ask you something? These guys went crazy when they saw that Hans is on the way. Let me tell you this. He fucked you. He didn't get here on time. And you cheer him like he's a hero. Yeah. Spit my mouth again. That is true. Hans Kim is racing to get here right now. I cannot imagine how unsafe the roadways are right now with Hans Kim out there driving as fast as he can, knowing that there's over 300 people waiting for him and the possibility of a challenge coming up if he doesn't make it in time. But to stall for Hans Kim, I pulled another name out of the bucket. And of course, again... The Bucket of Destiny has such an amazing sense of humor that it has given us yet another Asian comedian uh, that we know that has been on this show before. Ladies and gentlemen, while we wait for another Asian comedian, I present to you Ty Win, everybody. It's Ty Win. Hey, what's up, y'all? So I smoke a lot of pot. It helped keep me Asian. <laughs> Without it, I'm Mexican. <laughs> I do it so you can tell the difference between me and Hans. <laughs> um, this year, I'm working on being more vulnerable. I found that it's hard for me being an, an Asian male and being vulnerable because I was raised by the Viet Cong. So now when I'm on a date with a lady, I try and be vulnerable. I let her know, hey, I text and drive. <laughs> and if she's okay with that, then I'll be a little bit more vulnerable. I let her know, hey, sometime I have a drink or two and then drive. <laughs> and if she's okay with that, then I'll just be 100% honest. Hey, I committed manslaughter in a Volkswagen. <laughs> and there it is, Tywin, oh, ladies. And, oh say, yeah, one more part. Yeah. Go ahead, do it. And if she's okay with that, then it's straight to anal. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Okay. Absolutely. Wow, a standing ovation from this meth head. Unbelievable. Oh, were you just coming back from the restroom? Is that what I... Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> Ty, up, amazing Tony? performance, man. Thank How about you. another hand for Ty, everybody? Okay. Thank you, thank you. Absolutely fantastic. You've been on this show a number of times in Los Angeles and at all the different clubs here in Austin, Texas. Uh, that's my third time. Ever on this show? Yeah, all in Austin. Oh, in Austin. Yeah. Right. But Maybe you were... Asian look the same to you. No, that's not true. That's not true. You're a very, very special looking Asian. Uh, I specifically don't forget you. Uh, Don Barris. Yeah, I think, first of all, you were hysterically oh, funny. thank you. You just have an attitude. I wouldn't want to be your friend, though. <laughs> Why is that? Because you Do seem I like you really wear on people. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you know, if I was in a film, they would put me as a villain, like, immediately. Yeah, one of the yeah. villains. Yeah. I don't think the main villain. I think one of the first to like get killed by the good guy. I think you'd be good at that. Oh, but he knows martial arts, though, for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. Can you show us some of the uh, martial arts? Can we get a little martial arts music by the band? A one, two, one, two, three, four. Oh. 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 Okay, that was pretty good. All right, guys, that was good. All right, I guess they um, all aren't the same. I feel uh, like I just sold out my race right there. 
You just sold out your rice? <laughs> oh my goodness, that is like, an, that is the final boss in the Asian the video game. If you sell all of your rice, you, you are the Asian I mean, of the century. I mean, I am a starving artist. That's why I'm on this show. That's why I sign up. Okay. Well, yeah. good news for you. We have a number 23 waiting for you uh, <laughs> after this. A24. Um, Ty Nguyen. Uh, very, very interesting. What else about you, Ty? Tell these people more about your life that they would be surprised to know. Give us some of the... Perhaps you could show us your Volnoabo side. Um, I I I live in Pflugerville. Oh, well, well, well. He's actually uh, Pflugerville famous. He has a hit song all about Pflugerville that became really popular. What? What? <laughs> Yeah. What does it sound like? You want the band to play behind you? Will you sing it? Yeah, I'll sing it. I thought okay. Uh, Talk to Michael. Tell uh, Michael what it is. So, Tell him how uh, it goes. You 130 don't... tempo. Huh? 130 BPM. That's the tempo. All right, how about this? I'll just sing a cappella and y'all follow. Get the guy with uh, the disability back. All right, all right. All right. Here he is all singing right, a song. Right. I'm from a city with a name that's hard to spell. Half the people living here got a job at Dell. Blue shirt, gray khaki, that's my cubicle fit. Drive a Honda Accord with a beautiful kit. Me and the boys hang out in the cul-de-sac. We drink red wine, eat trail mix snacks. The homie got drunk and he tried to rap. I received complaints on the next door app. Got the ring alarm for them Paddy Bergner. Stole my brother, catanitic converter. When I see them sucker, I make them pay. Like the grass ain't cut and I'm the HOA. <laughs> Over yet. Uh, I'm at the dark park, buying a ton of reefer. Can't go outside with the cedar fever. So I don't run he knows my sneeze or violent. When I say Pflugerville, the P is silent. Thank you. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. You're like if Wu Tang was Wu Tang. <laughs> this is absolutely incredible. Holy shit. I thought that song was going to be I about thought you Green heard Acres. that song, Tony. What? I thought you heard that song. No, no. Really? I, I Red not, Band never show you? No, no. I don't let Red Band show me I don't anything. Talk to <laughs> We are wow. strictly business partners, an hour, 55 minutes each week, and then <laughs> two other directions. It's incredible. Wow. wow. Could have fooled me. Wow. But that was amazing. Oh, You're like if you. Eminem was on MSG. <laughs> <laughs> that is unbelievable. Yeah. What a talent. I mean, you know, I owe it all to the soy sauce. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You are... The soy sauce boss. Ty also has his own comedy club, and it's inside of his house every week. Explain yeah, to do. explain to the people what he just said. I cannot even imagine this. So I built a comedy club inside my living room. So it's a legit comedy club. So that way I don't have to go out and network with people and stuff because I don't like networking. How are the crowds? A lot of neighbors. Um, no, it's actually a lot of couples that go there so it's kind of weird because the neighbor don't know what I'm doing so they think <laughs> they think I have a swinger party every Saturday night right yeah it's like your 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 house is like your head it's a business in the front party in the back <laughs> yeah. oh, so yeah. red band doesn't tell you that neither no, I don't. I don't. We, 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 what you see is what you get, guys. Oh, I okay, mean, really, wow. we are strictly. It's like you know what I mean. It's like Roger Waters and David Gilmore. They they do a thing together. They don't hang out. It's an Kinda old sad, reference, man. but uh, <laughs> Floyd sad. people. It's like uh, perhaps let me get one for you. It's like um, Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan. You know what I mean? Like we <laughs> do the same thing. Yeah, that's but we're, true. Yeah. yeah, we don't. Have, we're not exactly. Well, we're, we're, we can see who's Bruce Lee here. Red Dan. All right. 
Okay. That's my man. Someone's trying to get booked on <laughs> hey, the I secret show. Hey, I would love to have you on the secret show Thursday at the Sunset Strip. It was. Yeah. I'm down. I'm down. But I'm unfortunately down. for you, you chose the wrong Bruce Lee. Because I have two Tony and Friends show, one on Tuesday, one on Wednesday. But since he's Bruce Lee, I'm not booking you on him. So I'm gonna I'm gonna book legends like Don Barris. You win Brian a little, Holtzman. you lose a little. Yeah, it's part of the game. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's just how the fortune cookie crumbles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there he goes. Right, Tie win, good. everybody. Here's a. Here's the big joke, Buck. You have one of these yet? Have you ever gotten one of those? Okay, absolutely. Is Hans here yet? He is? Wow, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of those... Ty, you're going that way. What's happening? Why? That's the first time ever people have started to try. It just happened twice in a row. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this has never happened before where Hans has missed his spot. It's never happened before where Hans has threatened to not show up the next day. It's never happened where he faked flights being canceled out of Newark. I think he felt the pressure. I think he knew I had something up my sleeve. So here, with a brand new minute. This is Hans Kim. This is Hans Kim. What's up? Holy shit. I made it. <laughs> Does anyone have any cocaine for me right now? I had a bunch, but I lost it all at the White House. Ah! Hope you guys had a great 4th of July, or as I like to call it, Juneteenth for white people. <laughs> Let's go invade Iraq again. <laughs> yeah. Let's go to Vietnam, best out of three. I used to think I was trans, but I'm not that into women's sports or drag for children, so. <laughs> These trans people are doing the Lord's work. They're educating our children and humiliating our women. Because sometimes these bitches have to be reminded. You're not that good at pickleball. Don't make me put on a dress and prove it to you. Thank you. Wow. 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 Look at you, buddy. Woo. <laughs> Look at you, buddy. Here I was ready to have you go against one of your hardest challenges next week. And then you come in, you speed in. Obviously, you called Yoni ahead of time. You wanted to make it. You <laughs> warned him. This is absolutely incredible. And you come in without a doubt. You and Cam Patterson, the two resident regulars with the sets of the night, showing how it's done. And it should be much harder for you two guys than everybody else since you have to do this every single week. Everybody else should be doing their best minute. They should be crushing the whole way through. You come in and you show exactly how it's done. Topical stuff. Real jokes. How do you feel right now? I feel great, Tony. I was just in seat 12B. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about it. Tell us about the delays and the travels. I tried to update the audience. I said that you were lying to me. At one point, I forgot to tell you guys this. At one point, he sent me a picture from uh, the customer service line. He goes, this is how long customer service is right now at the airport. And it was like a kind of long line. I go, that's not even that long of a line. And then I remembered. I'm not kidding you, by the way. And then I remembered, I have Hans Kim's location <laughs> on my phone. And something in my gut was telling me. He gave it to me a long time ago so that I could yell at him when he does bad open mics. And sometimes I'll see him at a bad open mic. I go, what the fuck are you going to do? <laughs> anyway, so I checked his location. He's at the fucking Hilton. And then I go, did you just Google a picture of an airport line and send it to me? I swear to God, this is our dialogue. I could have been t dealing with anything on a nice Sunday off, and there I am going, Hans, make it to the fucking show. <laughs> Tell us more. Tell us about these uh, fake delays. The very real delays. Uh... <laughs> Bullshit. Bullshit. It's all over the news. It's on WallStreetJournal.com. <laughs> very tricky to get over here. They canceled all the flights for a thunderstorm that never happened. These fucking pussies. 
I know. You told me there were serious thunderstorms coming in. I looked at the weather report. It was like a 40% <laughs> chance. I'm like, what the f- Oh, this is the weirdest she's lie. She's a fucking liar, man. Sorry. I felt like I felt like you were in the room with your girl. Am I right? No. You, you she didn't go on this trip with you. No, she didn't. Oh, normally you take the lady on the road with you, Don Barris. Let me smell his dick. I'll see. Yeah. You. <laughs> Let's find out once and for all. <laughs> That's like, it. That's it. Pull out your little. It's not how it works. No. Guys. No. <laughs> That it only works with a spit in the mouth thing. You can't just start your own <laughs> yeah, chant. I'm, uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm back in the Korean War. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, you you didn't have your girl with you on this trip. No, I was all alone, all alone in the extended stay. Uh, I went at 6 a.m. for the flight. Didn't happen. Then I went back home and uh, to the hotel, just relax. And I went the next day today. Went for the 1.30 flight. That was booked. I was on the standby list, so I got bumped to the 3.30. That was delayed till 5.30. But I got on, and now I'm here at the greatest live podcast of the world. What a miss it for the world. Tony. Yes, Don Barris. say we have the whole audience just beat the fuck out of him for lying. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this. Because normally you've been taking your girlfriend on the road with you. Why did she not end up on the road with you this weekend? Where were you again? New Brunswick. New Brunswick, New Jersey. Yes. And you went solo. Yeah. Why did she All not hands. go with you this week? Uh, she didn't go with me this week because her friend Sophia, or I shouldn't have said her name, but uh, <laughs> her friend was in from London, England uh, for the 4th of July. So she had to hang out with her all weekend instead of coming with me. Uh, and she went out all night, Sixth uh, Street, got drunk, had a great time. So I'm glad that she's ha- she has freedom f- to do that. What did it feel like? What did it feel like being alone on the road? Were you lonely at all? Yeah, I was constantly checking her. Lo- I have her location. How lonely were you exactly? I was about uh, seven. So lonely. <laughs> from Team America World Police. That is the leader of North Korea. <laughs> okay, that's enough. <laughs> that was pretty Were ronry. you so ronry? That was pretty ronry. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you do to pass the time? Uh, I had the Kleenex next to my bed. The, yeah, uh, that's all it takes. <laughs> hotels never, they put it in the bathroom. I move it to the bed all the time. Yeah, uh, they don't put lotions out at hotel rooms no. now. Did you, you have know to this? They use conditioner. It fucking yeah. sucks. It's unbelievable. <laughs> the old spitting conditioner. Why don't you just use the sheets? I was uh, I was at an extended stay, so I yeah. And plus, Asians uh, don't fuck with their laundry like that. You know what <laughs> I mean? They, they're, they're known for cleaning the sheets, not dirtying them, <laughs> soiling them. <laughs> they put uh, the soy in soiling. <laughs> All right, okay. Hans Kim, tell us something interesting about this week or weekend. I uh, recently uh, realized that I might be peeing on my girlfriend a little bit. Tell uh, us about that immediately. Because <laughs> <laughs> after we have sex, we're just completely naked, and then I go to the bathroom, and then uh, there's a little dribble, and then I go cuddle her, and then I, I feel like she can tell that my dick is wet. and she's Right. Like, she gets a little bit of that P.F. Chang on her. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's so stupid. This is the dumbest show ever in the history. I don't know why anybody watches this or is loyal to us whatsoever. It's incredible. Um, so, man, how long had you think you've been slightly peeing on, um, on your girlfriend? Pretty much every night. Wow. <laughs> that is R. Kelly. <laughs> Little R. Kelly reference for the great Hans Kim. Very interesting. Hans, I was ready, if you weren't going to make it, to have you challenge your spot next week. And like I've said, that will always be on the table. If you have a rough set, you are going to be challenged for your spot. I find it to be very, very entertaining. And I find it, most importantly, 
to be an incredible way to bring out the best in you. I truly think some of the best sets that we've seen from you uh, in the past year have been in the past month or two since I've really lit a fire under your walk. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to keep it that way. And I was so ready to have you challenged next week, but God damn it, you fucking rushed to be here. And then you came up guns a blazing with one of the best sets of the night. So <clears throat> you have to still do good next week, but you're not going to have to challenge for your spot. We're going to let you have <laughs> Thank it. Thank you, Tony. But if that one goes rough, the next week you're being challenged. You get it, right? Yes. So it's... keep it up, Hans. You're doing great work. How about one more time for the great Hans Kim, everybody? Thank you, guys. That was Hans Kim. That was Hans Kim. Well, now, 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 ladies and gentlemen, it has come to that time in the night where there's only one way to put a ribbon on a show like this, everybody. There's one guy that never misses his flight. There's one guy that never's running late. This guy has the most sets in the history of the show, the most interviews in the history of the show. The only living Kill Tony Hall of Fame member. He's the Vanilla Gorilla. The Memphis Strangler, the Big Red Machine, William Montgomery! They found a powdery white substance in the White House recently. At least it was powdery this time, said Bill Clinton. Pete Davidson is going back to rehab, stemming from PTSD and depression. I mean, imagine if you had dated Ariana Grande, Kate Beckinsale, Kim Kardashian, Larry David's daughter, Cindy Crawford's daughter, Christina Applegate, Caitlyn Jenner, Chelsea Clinton, Larry David's other daughter, Red Band's mom, Michelle, Fe <laughs> Michelle Pfeiffer is Catwoman. You'd be depressed, dude! The more I think about it, the more I have questions about the moon landing. In fact, I'm starting to have my doubts about knots landing. <laughs> I don't know if y'all remember that movie, Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead, but yeah, that's what my father told me December 14th, 1992. <laughs> then he handed me a shovel. I was five years old. I didn't know what death was. <laughs> okay, that's my time. That's it. William Montgomery. Yes, Don Barris. <laughs> what about Red Band's mom? That was yeah. shocking. You'd be surprised. She uh, She's quite the topic of conversation. She's in good company show. with all those ladies, though. Yeah, she was. It's a real classy bunch. Um, William, you have a real knack for uh, some outdated references. There was a, a, a not landing joke that literally did not land at all. <laughs> Yeah, and not you landing did, the famous you, spin you, off of Dallas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's another one. You just did it right there. A Dallas yeah, it's, reference. It's not show. landing is a famous spin off of Dallas, the famous and you have television. A new Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead joke. <laughs> uh, have you ever thought about writing movie jokes about recent movies that are. That are I have thought about it, but it's, been, it's hard, Tony. It I is. really. I don't know. I Have mean, you I gone to see any movies recently? Perhaps the new Barbie movie. No, I'm waiting to see the new Barbie movie. You're waiting to see it? What are you waiting for? Yeah, I'm waiting on a... Uh, it's not I'm, out yet, Tony. Oh, <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's not out yet. There I am. Mr. How are you not in touch with what's happening in society? Wow. When? when, when well, all right. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? You know who's killing it? Nicolas Cage. Have you seen any recent Nicolas Cage movies? Yeah, the one where he's storming uh, that the prison on The Rock. Oh, no, that's that's about 22 years old, William. Um, incredible. Yeah, that's a hell of a movie. I saw that for the first time last week. Amazing. Amazing. Can I just say one yeah, thing real quick? absolutely. She spit in my mouth earlier. <laughs> it's true. 
She did. She did. And he, he, which means he basically came in his mouth earlier because uh, we heard. I could taste his semen for <laughs> sure. Little. He came in. We know. We got it. We know the order of events. She is so blonde that she's explaining it, everybody. He came in my mouth and then I spit in his mouth. Yes. Yes. We know. We know the. We, we have the fucking uh, yarn attached to the faces on the wall. It's like all oh, we've connected the dots. Just one string. We understand how the cum ended up in Don's mouth. They also have the same size shorts on. I can see both of y'all's it is upper thighs. I can see your pussy a little bit. Incredible. <laughs> those I shorts are t- those shorts are so short that I'm beginning to think that perhaps the cum taste that you had, Don, was from her mouth. Maybe he spit some other dude's cum in her mouth earlier. And now... Oh. <laughs> All right. I love it. So uh, what else is going on in life, William Montgomery? So excited. I'm going with Tony to Hawaii this weekend. But Tony, we're famously not getting our dog vaccinated. And it has been super hard trying to find a kennel to to take her in i mean all the fucking kennels around austin all your your dogs have to be fully vaccinated or i'm not getting my dog vaccinated give us some reasons why you don't want to get your dog vaccinated i mean i don't know if you've been reading all the news about the dog vaccinations i mean it turns some of them gay i mean i can't have i'm not gonna have a fucking little lesbian fucking and for the pieces of shit they were talking online about my little dog being scared. She wasn't scared. Mind your own fucking business. Oh. I can't find a place to keep her in a ca- I can't find a place. Wait, what were they saying online? We have to that know. the dog looks scared. What's William doing holding a fucking little dog up here? Keep your fucking business to yourself. I'm not interested in it. The little girl loved being up here. By the way, I'm going to start bringing the fucking dog up here every fucking week. And for the people that don't like me playing my synthesizer song, it's about to be a weekly thing, you pieces of shit. You don't like that song? Well, I love that song. It's a bunch of bitches out there talking shit, but yeah, it's... Uh, I love it. You're doubling down. You're gambling on yourself. Are you ever going to stop playing that song? You know, I never going to stop playing that song! But if, if anybody can look after Gator, let me know after the show. We literally <laughs> have to find somebody to, get, to take her in. Red Band, you would... Oh, wow. Look at that. I'll take care of your dog real good. Oh, shit. Whoa. <laughs> what Some... does that mean? You put your fucking dick by her mouth, yeah, you know, pervert? Yeah. Wow. Oh. William, I haven't seen you in a while. It's good to see you. Man. Yeah, nice to see you, too. <laughs> yeah, Don and William, you guys know each other very well. Don, last time you saw William, he was a completely bloated alcoholic. Um, but and Don, now... wasn't it fun? I swear to God, every single Monday night on Kill Tony at the Comedy Store, I was always off Tuesday, Wednesday for my self-storage unit job. So I would be at the fucking Comedy Store till 3 in the morning, and Don would famously close the OR. Do you remember all of our conversations I in there? I certainly do. It was. I'd be talking to you for two hours in there. I don't know yeah. if other people didn't like it, but I oh, was coked had... the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. And to answer yeah. question, nobody else liked it except me and you. Yeah, they really did not. I remember a lot of comedy store employees being like, William was annoying last night. He did this. He did that. But I loved it. So yeah, yeah it was fun. It's nice. Don to loves see you again. the chaos. It is absolutely incredible. William, what else before we let you go? I don't know. I mean, I'm super pumped about that. And also, y'all have to know, Tony told me on Saturday, or maybe I shouldn't even see, say this, but he said it was my best set I've ever had, that which is was true. very sweet That is coming true. from Tony, and it was. It felt, other than one time, I, I thought I was having a heart attack. My chest started hurting for about two seconds. During that, my best set I've ever had, I felt as well. My heart literally started hurting, so I thought I was about to die on stage. Well, that so might that be good scared for you. me. That might be good for you because that was the best set you've ever had. I mean, 25 minutes of absolute, absolute crush, fucking fire kill. Everything was wild. William, was great, is, uh, but... William is indeed going with me 
on this massive theater tour for the rest of the year, August all the way through December. Giant, massive theaters. So we're getting in shape for that. He's going to be on the I... Tony and Friends shows tomorrow. The next day, we're going to Hawaii. Then we have three weeks off, and then 26 cities. Massive theaters. Exciting stuff. Exciting stuff indeed. You're gonna you're gonna not retire, right? You're gonna keep doing comedy. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure. Hold on, what did you, you say? Are that you ever me? gonna stop doing comedy? I ain't never gonna stop doing. <laughs> Unless if I have a heart attack on stage. Well, that's not really a. That's not really a kind of a momentum killer. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, really brought the energy to a halt there. The old if I have a heart attack. But I ain't never go have a heart attack. That's so right. <laughs> that is right. I'm never going to have a heart attack. So That is true. You are never going to have a heart attack. William, everybody loves you. We love you. Another Why was that funny, bitch? <laughs> God. I wanted to slap that chick all night. I know what you mean. She has a little bit of an attitude problem. It's because uh, she is waiting for that guy to die. <laughs> <laughs> is that true? Is this a family here? Yeah, it's a family. Don't let the son start to answer. I don't. I just want to tell the, the daughter, you look good. I mean, real good. <laughs> All right, well, uh, okay. Thank you to the piece of shit that just threw me at the... Dude, you're not allowed to do that. I'm going to kill you right after the show. Someone throw a car at you? What is that? It's a Hot Wheels car. Why would someone throw a Hot Wheel at you? I mean, what the fuck were you thinking, dumbass? Why'd you, why'd you throw the Hot Wheel? Having the set of my life up here right now. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. My dad Ladies and gentlemen, uh, one more time for the great and powerful William Montgomery, everybody. <laughs> the drawing from Ryan J. E. Belt is in. That's available at RyanJEBelt.com. He draws every single episode. While this episode was happening, he drew that amazing picture of Don Barris that you're seeing on your screen right now. Don Holy Barris, shit. literally the creator of my favorite and a lot of your favorite comedians, favorite comedian, and Fucking the creator applaud! of your favorite comedy movie, Windy City Heat, the Big Three Podcast, and Simply Don, the Podcast the Network, show. the Ding Dong Show, the longest running show at the Comedy Store. Literally, if it wasn't for this guy at the Comedy Store, having his own show, Kill Tony, Never even would have been created. You he was hear the that? Only Applaud person, for me. He was the only person that ever did a show different than a normal stand-up show at the Comedy Store, which completely inspired this show. Uh, how about one more time, as loud as you can get, an ATX welcome for the great Don Barris, everybody. Thank you to Joe Blaster, the Red Rose, the Yellow Rose, Austin Security Guard Service, and Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey. How about one more time for the best damn band in the land? Michael Gonzalez, Paul Diemer, D Madness, and the great Dave Shear joining us on guitar tonight. Some brand new exclusive Kill Tony Mothership merch on your way out, only available right now. And let's check out the artwork from local artist Chris Rogers. Oh, little Aaron Belial, who's got another AGT appearance coming up. Rock and fucking roll, red band. Check out my new club, the Sunset Strip, sunsetstripatx.com. Right, Every I love it. Come see me do stand-up tomorrow night and the next night, secret show on Thursday. Go see the band the other nights. Don Barris and Friends is uh, tomorrow night in the... With Tony Hinch, That's right. Duncan I'm, Trussell. I'm, I'm going to be on there, and, and they're going to uh, be on my show. It's going to be a lot of fun. Very incestual comedy happenings here. To you, the best comedy fans on planet Earth, we love you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Love you.